sense with prayer, then I'll talk about it. Sahaviryam karvavahai Tejasvi navaditamastu Mavitvishavahai Om Shanti 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 May the Lord protect us. May that divine reality nourish us. May our study, our investigation, bring illumination of consciousness. May there be no enmity between us. May we, may we experience peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, Peace in our bodies. Peace in this beautiful place of healing. Om Shanti. Now I want to let the birds give the first part of the inaugural address. And just invite you to take a moment to really be in this beautiful place of healing with Dr. Shanbhag Gayatri. Dr. Devika, Dr. Sanika, and Courtney have put together as a blessing, as a place of peace. So let's just take a moment of silence and feel the beauty and the peace and the healing of this beautiful place. I'm going to speak a little bit about Ayurveda and yoga together. And the first thing is that there is a mutual understanding in these two, what we call sister sciences. And that has to do with our purpose and how we do what we do. And principally, you know, at our Kriya Yoga Center, our vision is individual and planetary, global awakening, enlightenment for everyone and for the whole world. That's our vision. And yet we think, well, okay, well, how do we do that? <laughs> how do we? bring enlightenment. Well, in the same way that Dr. Shambhag and his beautiful team bring healing, which is to start with the understanding that that divine self within every person is already enlightened, is already whole. Healing is there at the core of our being, our wholeness already exists. So what do we do? Well, we have to arrange conditions so that the self can emerge, can be known, can be realized, and we can live the awakened, healthy, happy lives that uh, we are really designed for. Every single one of us is designed for that kind of success, that kind of happy and healthy life. But we have to find how do we support that? How do we support what is innately true uh, to be known and to be expressed? And so yoga and Ayurveda have that uh, deeply in common, that what we're doing, no one else can give us healing. And no one else can give us enlightenment. Because they cannot give us what we already have. 
but they can certainly help us to arrange conditions so that we are able to connect with the source of healing within us, which is the divine self. The, the self is the healer, and we all um, have to access that in order for healing uh, to occur. So first, let me go back and talk a little bit about Kriya Yoga and Ayurveda. So Ayurveda, which probably you, you know, but in case not, this is a Sanskrit word, um, means the knowledge of life. And it has a very deep meaning, of course, beyond just those words. It means how to live in accordance with what is true about the nature of reality. And so it's a scientific approach, also an artistic approach. We have to have an art and science to uh, Ayurveda. So I loved having the, the dance and that creative energy and power as demonstrated as we began and to feel this beautiful environment both inside and out. You will notice that everything has been arranged for our comfort here today. Beautiful food that is suitable to the season, comfortable uh, shade, this, all of the trees that are shimmering and welcoming us, and inside everything so pristine and really lovely. So. It is Dr. Schombach's area to teach you about Ayurveda. I can only teach you a little tiny bit about how the two intersect. Kriya Yoga, in our uh, tradition, as we teach here in San Jose, came from the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. My guru, Roy Eugene Davis, who is an American yogi, is a direct disciple of Paramahansa Ji, and he met him in 1949. And my Guruji is still, uh, even though he met Yogananda as a young man, he's still uh, teaching. He's in his 80s. He is a picture of health and vitality. And one of the reasons is he has always included Ayurvedic principles with his teachings of Kriya Yoga. So yoga means, commonly we understand it as a union, um, but it really refers to um, being restored to our original wholeness so that we are not uh, identified uh, simply with the body and the mind, but we know ourselves as spiritual beings expressing through the body and mind. In Kriya, simple word means action, but when you bring it together with yoga, it means those actions that we take that support a holistic and enlightened living. So it's a spiritual path, a path of awakening. But as we have been taught by my Guruji and as Paramahansa Yogananda taught, the, the teachings of health um, and yoga always go together. They are inseparable. And they, are, um, they have been called sister sciences. And that is because they have the same mother. They come from the Vedas. They are truly sisters. So they have the same origin of the teachings. And so a couple things I want to say. One is that the value in these teachings we have today, whether it is Kriya Yoga or Ayurveda, um, lies, I think, not so much in their antiquity, although we do like to say these teachings are thousands of years old. But just because something is thousands of years old doesn't make it valuable, right? But so what is it? So we can point back and say this has ancient roots. So that is its... Uh, antiquity, but I think what makes it truly valuable today is its authenticity and its authority. The authority of both yoga and Ayurveda come from the rishis, those with awakened hearts and minds, investigating the nature of reality. What is true about the body? What is true about the mind? What is true about consciousness? So we had these seers investigating the nature of reality, how to awaken to our essential nature. So they were the original um, seers of yoga, bringing down the Vedic teachings, and along with that, Ayurveda as well. So their value, I think, lies in that authenticity, which is to understand, to see, to really see, to really know what is true. 
through direct experience. Yoga and Ayurveda both have that right in their teachings, that it is not, and Dr. Schambag and uh, Dr. Devika and Samika, as we went through the uh, tours, were talking about this. It's not, and Gayatri will be showing us that cooking is not just, here's the recipe and how you do it. You, you have to do it, you have to experience it. So the authority of these teachings, and of yoga and Ayurveda, comes from this direct experience. So it's knowledge about, but direct experience of, that makes all of the difference. So there is the authority of the teachings and their authenticity. And of course, because they've been around so long, um, they've been time tested. And so we have, of course, the record of people who uh, have been healed through Ayurveda. We have records of those who have been awakened through the path of yoga. I want to share a quote with you from a contemporary sage, um, Haridas Baba, who's often just called Babaji. Um, and he, he wrote, Ayurveda is to free the mind which is trapped in the body. And yoga is to free the soul which is trapped in the mind. And of course that doesn't say everything there is to say about both systems, but I thought that was so helpful in terms of thinking how they're complementary. So Ayurveda is to free the mind which is trapped in the body. Yoga is to um, free the soul which is trapped in the mind. So both of these sister sciences share the same goal, which is ultimately liberation liberation from the wrong idea of what we are. To be able to awaken and know ourselves as spiritual beings, to not be trapped in the body-mind identity. And of course, Ayurveda then teaches us, once you know how, who and what you are, how do you live in harmony with that? My Guruji always taught and said to us, there's a power for good that runs this universe, and we can learn to cooperate with it. And that is what yoga and Ayurveda both teach. Learning about what that power is and then how it is that we can come to cooperate with it. And because when we do, then we have a healthy and happy life. I would like to say that yoga and Ayurveda are inseparable, really. That you, you really cannot succeed in one without the other. Uh, at least not succeed fully. You may get some initial benefit, but I think to fully succeed, um, you have to understand that they're inseparable. And I see this because people come to the center and of course they want enlightenment, um, they want to take up meditation or hatha yoga or learn yoga philosophy, um, but if they try to do that, they try to meditate without changing their diet, without changing their lifestyle, then the mind um, is either too um, uh, active or too heavy to properly be able to meditate. So very soon, usually about in the third week of class, those of you who are in my Eternal Way class, usually about third or fourth week of class, I say now we have to turn our attention to diet because the food affects the mind and of course the mind is the principal tool we're using for meditation. So success uh, I think full success in both paths, whether it is Ayurveda or yoga, we have to understand they're inseparable. So you, if you try to um, use Ayurveda just as a healing system without coming to a greater understanding of what you really are and where that healing power is coming from, uh, then you're likely to put you know, all of that onto Dr. Shambhag when really he, his role is to introduce you to yourself, to your uh, divine self uh, as the healer, and that means you will be empowered then to live a happy and healthy life. A couple other things I, I want to mention um, for the students who are new to yoga and Ayurveda is, is that they share, I mentioned this a little bit already, they share the same viewpoint about the human being, and that's because they share the same cosmology coming out of what is called the Samkhya system where we understand the body and mind to be made up of the elements. And uh, we have to learn what those elements are and how to deal with them. And uh, you'll be learning here lots of what you can do with even just simple things like food. 
uh, to bring the elements in the body-mind into right um, balance. And um, let's see what else I want to say about them. Of course, they're mutually supportive, they're complementary. Succeeding in one is going to help you succeed in the other. And also, I think today we need to understand that these systems of yoga and Ayurveda are living systems. That is what has allowed them to succeed through centuries. In other words, there's truth at the core, and then we find how to adapt that truth into the particular vicinity, particular climate, particular country and time that we are living in. So both systems find ways to be uh, accessible. We come into relationships with the trees that can grow here, and we learn how uh, to have the right relationship with what is in our own environment. And the uh, last thing I want to say on my list is that I think that Ayurveda and Yoga uh, in a sense have a similar challenge today um, because they are both, um, although Ayurveda is a medical system, it is still spiritually based. And Yoga, many people of course see as exercise, but it is a spiritually based system. So I think that the greatest challenge that we face is the challenge to connect people to the deep truth of both Ayurveda and yoga so that in this Western culture it doesn't become another product, you know, something uh, to sell, uh, but that is uh, yoga um, props and all of that, Some uh, people looking for something external, how they can, you know, quote-unquote, do yoga. And we see the same thing happening with Ayurveda with um, becoming something that people can just buy, right? And so I think that there's the similar challenge. So we want to look to the authentic roots of both of these systems. And I'm, I'm so grateful that Dr. Shanbhag and Gayatri invited me today because I feel that is their intention. I mean, they are a long time um, uh, healers and practitioners in this very ancient rooted tradition. And I know they're coming from this place of, of depth and offering all that it truly has to offer um, because that, um, that's what makes it truly meaningful and truly satisfactory to do. So I started off with the prayer that, we, that our study can bring illumination of consciousness and that there will be no enmity between us, no competition, no fighting, um, but that we can work together for peace. And um, we need to see more cooperation, places like this and the center. We don't need to isolate and work in our own little silos. <laughs> We need to demonstrate what yoga and Ayurveda are truly about, which is being present to uh, create these environments where true healing can occur. So thank you so much, Dr. Shambhag and Gayatri, for inviting me today. And it is my joy to be here in this beautiful place of healing, to feel the vibration of this place, and to have us think about how yoga and Ayurveda are sisters. They're like our two legs that help us stand straight and balance. So may your journeys of healing and wholeness be completely blessed. Om Shanti Shanti Hari Om Shanti. May absolute peace and divine love pervade.